Hello and welcome to this week's online service for North Sevenside. The theme for our service today is Come, See, Hear. It follows the two readings for today, the first being when the prophet Samuel, as a young boy, first hears God calling him, and the second reading where Nathaniel, one of the disciples, is told about Jesus. He's initially quite sceptical. We all hear or sense God speaking to us in different ways. Some even may be thinking, he doesn't speak to me. And we'll address that as well. So we start our service with the call to worship. We have come together into the presence of our Lord. So let us quieten our hearts and minds, put aside our concerns and distractions. Let us open ourselves to listen for God's voice, for the word God has for his people. Almighty God, you speak to us in so many ways. Help us in our worship today to hear your voice and to know it's you. Speak to us in the silence, through scripture and by the spirit. Speak through others, through your creation, through images, experiences, music and encounters. Speak in ways that we can understand. So speak, Lord, and help us to listen. Amen. God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace, and in the renewal of our lives make known your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. This morning, instead of reading the Gospel passage, I'm going to tell you a story. A story that takes place in the middle of the night, when the night is dark and the quiet is most quiet, 
when all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even the mouse. This was no ordinary house, for this was the house of God, and it held the Ark of the Covenant. A holy box covered in gold, pure gleaming gold, and on the top two golden angels reached out their wings, and God's very presence lived there. Most people were terrified to go near it, but Samuel was not afraid because he had helped the priest Eli serve God since he was a very small boy. At night, when everyone had gone home, he lay his mat down and slept in the corner of the room. One night was different. One night, God's voice spoke to Samuel. Samuel was fast asleep, but through his dreams he heard his name being called. Samuel, Samuel. Samuel got up and ran down the hallway to Eli's room. He thought Eli had called out to him. Here I am, Eli. What do you need? He said. However, Eli was fast asleep. He said, what? What's the matter, Samuel? You called me, Samuel said. No, I didn't, said Eli. Yes, you did, said Samuel. Eli said, no, I didn't. Now go back to bed. Samuel shrugged his shoulders and went back to bed. Then, a little while later, it happened again. Samuel, Samuel, came God's voice. Samuel got back out of bed and ran to Eli's room and said, You called me. Eli was asleep again, and when he woke, he was rather grumpier and said, No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, I definitely did not. Now go back to bed and don't wake me again. Then, for the third time, Samuel heard someone calling his name. This is getting ridiculous, he thought. Rather cross, Samuel stomped down the hall to Eli's room and said, You called? No, I did not, said an even grumpier Eli. Yes, you did, shouted Samuel. I heard you. Eli said, Hang on a minute. The penny had dropped. You heard someone calling your name, and it wasn't me, so it must have been God. God, Samuel said, crikey. Eli said, now go back to bed, and if it happens again, answer him, saying, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Samuel replied, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening, and trotted off back to bed. Then he heard it a further time, loud and clear, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel was very brave. He said, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. God talked to Samuel a lot after that. Samuel listened to God. And when he grew up, everyone listened to him because they knew he would tell them what God had said. Oh, Jesus, I have
passage today, Samuel finds it difficult to recognise God's voice. We're going to play a game now that's about listening to the voices or sounds of animals and birds. So perhaps you'd like to pause the video for a minute and go and find a piece of paper and a pencil. What I'd like you to do now is to write down the numbers one to five and then we're going to play you five different sounds and you've got to guess whether, what, which bird or animal that you're listening to. This is sound number one. <laughs> sound number two. Did you get that? Remember it could be a bird or an animal. Sound number three. And sound number four. And finally, this one, it's a little bit tricky, sound number five. Okay, how did you do? Right then, so let's give you some answers. The first sound was a duck. Secondly, we had a cat. Thirdly, you might have heard some cows mooing. The fourth sound was a frog. And finally, we were listening to a turkey. Okay, so maybe now you can have a think about how you could listen for, out for God and what he's saying to you. Our Gospel reading today is taken from John chapter 1 verses 43 to 51 and it tells how Jesus called Philip and Nathanael. The next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you come to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the word of the Lord. Most people don't actually hear God's voice. Okay, Samuel did, and some other Old Testament prophets seem to have, and those who were with Jesus when he walked on earth did. Other than literally hearing God, how can we know his presence, his awesome power and might, his majesty, his love, his forgiveness, other than words? What speaks to you? For some I know it's a beautiful sunset. Maybe it's a flower. 
gorgeous scenery, the stars on a moonless night. Does God speak to you in dreams? Do you hear God speak through other people sometimes? Yes, there are many ways to hear God. There's no right way, and it certainly doesn't have to be audible. Here is a poem by Ken Jaya, which explores this idea. It's called Not Only in Words. Why do you want me to speak? Is not my presence sufficient for you? The kiss of my love in the sunlight, or the scent of my being on a flower? Why do you want me to speak when I hug you in the embrace of a friend? When I move you by the fall of a song? When I show you the scars on my hands? Why do you ask me to speak when I use other voices, not mine? For mine is the cry of the stranger, the hungry, the prisoner, the poor. Why do you ask me to speak when I've and so, spoken so often before? Heed my world, read my word, seek my son, and then you will hear me. That poem reflects what we hear in Jeremiah 29 verse 13, when the prophet says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Now he's speaking God's words to us. That's a promise from God. If we seek him with all our heart, we will find him. Now, how do you do that? Well, the first step is to ask God to help you hear him. Then persist. Expect God to follow through on his promise. Try different ways of hearing God. Read your Bible. Maybe keep a diary of your thoughts. Talk to other Christians or try talking directly to God and see if he answers. Whatever inspires you and turns your thoughts to God, try and use that. Expect God to speak to you. When Samuel heard God, he replied as Eli taught him, speak Lord, for your servant is listening. When Nathaniel met Jesus, he decided that Jesus was the Messiah, even though he came from Nazareth. And he became Jesus's disciple. He followed him. So when you do hear, what will you do? Now, I think the most difficult prayer to really pray is one we frequently pray. It's part of the Lord's Prayer. We'll pray it today. It's the bit where you say, thy will be done. When you do hear from God, that's your only possible response. We need to do what we hear God telling us. Are you ready? If you want to hear from God, join me in this prayer. Let's pray. We thank you, God, for those times when we have sensed your presence, heard your voice, seen new insights, particularly when we have needed those things. Yet some of us, Lord, can't remember ever hearing your voice. Teach us how to make space, how to hear you, and to recognise your presence with us and how not to get in the way of others finding you. And we ask this for Jesus' sake. Amen.
sessions this week, we are going to pray using Psalm 139, which is all about God's perfect knowledge of us. He searches, knows, perceives, and is familiar with everything about us. We cannot hide from him. He is with us all the time, so let us silently listen and pray. Dear Lord, teach us again in your church how to be your servants today. Teach us to do your will and walk in your way with humility, care and true joy. Renew us with a sense of your purpose and help us to show others your love. Dear Lord, we confess that we do not always understand your ways. We are easily discouraged when life takes unexpected turns and our carefully laid plans and dreams come to nothing. We confess that we are quick to give up when things get difficult and quick to question your presence and your power. Forgive us. Grant us patience to wait for your good timing. Open our eyes to recognise your leading in our lives. To listen for your gentle whisper when we least expect it. And then give us courage to step out in faith and obedience, trusting in your leading, even when we cannot yet see the outcome. We praise you for your faithful love and pray that you would make us worthy to bear your name. Give us a consistent kindness and compassion for others. Keep us always tender-hearted, even when the world delivers difficult blows and setbacks to us. Teach us once again about your redeeming grace, in order that we may learn however slowly, however tentatively, how to forgive others. Teach us how to live abundantly into the future as victorious and expectant people, greeting each new day with eagerness and excitement. And indelibly remind us that we are among your forgiven and beloved community. Dear Lord, hear us as we remember those with difficulties who need your Holy Spirit's presence and your healing touch now. Keep them in your gracious care and insofar as we are able, use us to make their burdens lighter. When we pray in sorrow and give thanks for the lives of all those who have died. Abide with us as we abide in you today, this week, and always, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And let's say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen let's have a few moments of quiet while we reflect on the things that we have done that perhaps in all conscience we shouldn't have done or alternatively the things that we have not done that maybe at some point in the week we thought hmm, should have done that so let's have a moment of quiet while we reflect And then, would you join with me in saying, Most merciful God, 
Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. Forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be true? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you in me? Will you leave yourself behind me if I but call God the Father, who led the wise men by the shining of a star to find the Christ, the light of light, lead you also in your pilgrimage to find the Lord. Amen. May God, who has delivered us from the dominion of darkness, give us a place with the saints in light in the kingdom of his beloved Son. Amen. May the light of the glorious gospel of Christ shine in your hearts and fill your lives with his joy and peace. Amen. Blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. We have seen his glory, the glory revealed to all the nations. And so let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.